Have you ever felt that you're so afraid to open that door? Or have you felt that the door you really wanted to open slammed shut in front of you? You know there is light behind that door. But somehow, something is blocking your way to that door. And that something is your own thoughts. A number of years ago, the National Science Foundation estimated that our brains produce as many as 50,000 thoughts per day, and 70 to 80% of which are negative thoughts, which means we have about 3,000 thoughts per hour when we're awake, about 50 per minute, and that's almost one thought every single second. Now, I've been speaking about one minute now, so you must have had about 40 negative thoughts already. And I hope those are not about my speech. But this is when you're in an average situation. But what if you're faced with a very negative situation? Your thoughts could be 99% negative, right? You can only imagine how big a damage it'll give you. But what if I told you that you have the power and ability to shift that 99% negative to possibly an unlimited potential? Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not an inventor, I'm not a world record holder of any sort. I'm just an ordinary person like you. I'm standing here because, without any title or role, but because I have one strong belief, a belief that we all have the power to maximize our potential by shifting our mindset. The belief that actually gave me a miracle. Today you will discover two simple yet very powerful techniques that you can start using today to cause the shift. My friends may laugh at me now, but I used to be a hakoiri musume. You know what I mean? Well, in case you didn't catch that, it is carefully, gently raised princess in a little pretty box. I had nothing to complain about, but I wanted to see the world. I wanted to see what's beyond that little pretty box. So back in 1993, I decided to go see the world. So I went to St. Louis, Missouri. Waseda University sent me there. So I, I spent one year as an exchange student in St. Louis. But back then, my English uh, wasn't so great. I used to feel so intimidated and embarrassed to speak up with my broken English. I used to be like, I don't want to speak English, but I have to to improve it. But it's so embarrassing if I open up my mouth. Almost every other night, I closed the door behind me in my dorm and cried from frustration. Two months have passed. One Friday night, my dorm had a party. I was living in a freshman's dorm, and you know freshmen. They are finally free and independent from those longtime roommates called mom and dad. There was only one thing they dreamed of doing. What is it? get drunk, and party like crazy. So there are blasting music, and beer bottles, and pizza boxes spilling out of the trash can, and people are screaming and laughing, and I, I just wanted to escape from those drunk native English speakers, because they spoke even faster when they're drunk. <laughs> Lots of slangs. You know, I didn't even used to know the most basic slang at that time people would come up to me and say, hey, what's up? And I would be like, what's up? <laughs> up, up, up where? What, what, what's up there? I mean, seriously. So I managed my way through the crowd, almost. Then there was this guy, Nate, from my floor, blocking my way. He was already smelling like he just took a shower with beer. And Nate wrapped his arm around my shoulders and said, hey, Natty, Natty, how come you never socialize with us? And 
that was like a verbal knife to me. My frustration was at its peak. I was losing my confidence, and I was feeling like I shouldn't have come to America. Maybe it was too early. Maybe I should have waited until I mastered English. I was feeling like a water-filled balloon ready to explode. And Nate popped it. I burst into tears in front of, in front of everyone. What a party spoiler. I hated myself even more. But I tried so hard to put my English words together. I, I, want, I want to socialize too, but my English, embarrassing. And then Nate said something that really struck me. But this time, it wasn't a verbal knife. It was a wake-up call. So what? <laughs> what? So what? Who cares about that? Besides, your English is just fine. The last thing I expected was to learn something meaningful from this heavily drunk freshman. But this so what made me realize that I was the one and only one who was limiting myself. I can't speak English well. So what? It's embarrassing. So what? They don't even care about that. But what if people think I'm dumb? So what? Who cares about what other people think? So what? This was such a simple question, but so profound that it started to shift my negative thoughts and gave me some courage to take actions, baby step at a time. So a few days later, I decided I'm going to open up my door, literally. Whenever I was in my dorm room, I left the door slightly open so that people can peek in and say hi to me. I decided that I'm going to say a little more than hi. And I decided that I'm going to go knock on their doors and have a little chat. And fast forward 22 years since then, and look at me now. I'm speaking a TED in English, right? <laughs> my grammar may be a little wrong, and my, my, I have my accent, but you know what? So what? When you are trying to achieve a breakthrough, and your thoughts are getting in your way, whether it's your fear or lack of confidence, or perfectionism. Ask yourself, so what? Not once, not twice, but as many times as it takes to start the shift. Because it's your mindset that's limiting your growth, potential, and success. This simple yet powerful technique can cause a tremendous shift in your mindset and get you moving forward toward opening that door. I learned this very important life lesson from that drunk freshman, Nate. But at that time, I still had no idea that the shift in the mindset could be so powerful that it can even cause a miracle. My husband and I have been married since 1998. And I didn't really have a specific desire to have a baby. But when I turned 38, I thought, maybe I should before it, it gets too late. But it was already not an easy road. Imagine taking this needle and injecting yourself with something that feels like molten lava spreading across your belly every single day for 14 consecutive days. I felt like a livestock, like a pig with those hormone injections. I even felt like my human dignity was tarnished. Why do I have to go through this? Why me? I'm not some animal. I'm a human being. This is so humiliating. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. 
I kept telling myself these negative things for those 14 days. And the first genetic testing result, 99% abnormal, 99%. My doctor said, Natsuyo, I've never seen such a high percentage of abnormality. If the same result persists in the ne next time, you may want to rethink about getting pregnant. And the success rate is about 3%. I took it well, or so I thought. I went home, and all of a sudden, this sense of despair crept in. It felt like the door just slammed shut in front of me. I collapsed on the floor and just couldn't stop crying. Tear streaming down my face. And I realized that I really really wanted it to happen. 99% abnormal. How could it be that negative? But you know what else was so negative? My thoughts. Every single day, I was contaminating my mind with all those negative words. No wonder the result was so bad. The doctor said, the next one will be the last time. And it almost felt like it was impossible. But what if, what if there was something that I could do to turn it around? Then that would be to switch and shift my mindset and get rid of all those negative words out of my system. Yes, I have one more chance. Injections, so what? Feeling like the livestock, so what? The next day, I started to say yes to myself. Yes, I want to do this. Yes, I'm willing to do this. And yes, I can turn this around. But I didn't stop there. I also tried to see the yes. I closed my eyes and vividly visualized that there is this little fetus inside of me. And I tried to feel her and even talk to her. Hi there. I don't know your name yet, but your mommy's waiting for you. I can show you these beautiful flowers and butterflies and we can dance around all day together. So please, come to me. I lived in the yes for the next three months. And the next testing result, 99% normal. You know what the doctor said? Oh my goodness, this is abnormally normal. This is a miracle. Well, let me introduce you to that miracle. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but since this moment, I became a firm believer that every ordinary person has a power to unleash the sleeping potential by living in the yes. Our thoughts are naturally 70 to 80% negative. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't like that. No, I can't do that. But if the, everyone in the whole world is telling you, yes, you can, but you are telling yourself, no, I can't, who's going to win? You. So the only way to reprogram your little conversation in your head so that it's in the alignment with a person you want to become or success you want to get, and the life you want to have, is to train yourself with a technique to mindfully say the yes and see the yes. When you say the yes, you feel it. When you see the yes, 
you become it. Trust me, I'm the living example. Do not, do not underestimate the power of your thoughts. Miracle is not something that falls from the sky. It's something that you drive. So say the yes, see the yes. And if any doubts come up, so what? Keep seeing the yes so you can live in the yes. Then the negative 99% will shift to positive 99% and possibly unlimited. Thank you.